In 1934, the LNER needed a new set of engines to pull expresses along the lines from Edinburgh to Aberdeen. Their chief engineer, Nigel Gresley, set to the task, taking inspiration from French locomotive designs. While designing these engines, with such rapid progress and more complex designs being made elsewhere around the world, Gresley also decided to use them almost as his own guinea pigs to experiment on. Dubbed the P2 class, the first of these engines to be built was number 2001, Cock of the North, which was striking for a number of reasons. Firstly, it was one of the few, if not the first, passenger locomotive in the UK to have eight driving wheels to help with traction on the many gradients of the line. It also featured a lens-type rotary cam poppet valve gear, a larger firebox than most of Gresley's other designs, the front was streamlined in a similar manner to the Hush Hush, and was fitted with a V-shaped driver cab to help improve driver visibility. It also had a double chimney Calchap exhaust, which was designed so it could take different fittings to allow for experimentation with exhaust arrangements. The second, number 2002 Earl Marischal, was completed a few months later, fitted with standard Walshirt's valve gear and had a bigger superheating area. It was also fitted with additional smoke deflectors. Earl Marischal was far more efficient than Cock of the North due to its lower cylinder clearance and the various modification Cock of the North cylinders had undertaken. The third, Lord President, wasn't built until around a year later, following Earl Marischal's design, with Lord President having its weight reduced and a wedge-shaped front that became the standard look for the rest of the class, as well as Gresley's A4 designs. The fourth, Mons Meg, followed shortly after, with experimental valves and modified blast pipes. The fifth, Thane of Fife was built without the Kaichap double chimneys that the rest of the class had, and the sixth, Wolf of Bedenoch, had a different boiler compared to the rest. Despite their long wheelbase and experimental nature, the P2s were able to negotiate the many hills and curves of the Scottish Express routes competently, keeping time even on some of the heavier expresses. They averaged around 44 miles an hour and were noted to hit speeds almost up to 70. They worked well and many footplate crews were fond of them, but they weren't all perfect. Cock of the North had to be modified several times to correct some of the issues caused by some of its more experimental features, such as having its valve gear replaced with the more standard Walsh Arts valve gear. The engines also had a reputation for heavy coal consumption, but this was mostly thanks to Cock of the North before its refit. Their front crank axles were also prone to overheating and damaging themselves due to stress caused by fault with the front pony truck. It's also said that the engines could have performed better on different routes, and that running expresses between Edinburgh and Aberdeen was a waste of their potential. Despite all of that, the engines did serve a purpose elsewhere on the LNER. 2001 and 2002's experimental nature allowed Gresley to perfect various aspects of his locomotive designs, finding better configurations for chimneys, cab layouts and valve gear, which culminated shortly after in the creation of the A4s, Gresley's streamlined speed machines that went on to obtain the world record for the fastest steam-powered locomotive. The engines continued their work until 1943, when they were rebuilt one by one by order of Edward Thompson, the new chief engineer for the LNER after Gresley's death, and put to work on different parts of the line. Nobody is quite sure what sparked Thompson to do this. Some say it was jealousy of Gresley's designs, while others say it was simply due to the problems with the P2s in general. Whatever the reason, the P2s were refitted to follow a more uniform Pacific design. This solved most of the initial problems the P2s had, but raised many new ones, such as a lack of adhesion to the rails, riding rough at high speeds, and frame movement due to the frames having been modified to fit a different wheel layout. Their awkward layout plus British British Railways modernisation plans meant that all six of the former P2s were scrapped by 1961. The P2s were truly unusual locomotives, serving more as test benches for Gresley's later designs than express engines, but even then proved to be capable at handling the jobs they were built for. On top of this, they possibly laid the foundation for what is now currently the fastest steam locomotive in the world, so even if they barely hit 100 miles an hour themselves, they can still be thanked for helping Gresley get there. Yeah. While it was a shame that we never got to see much more of their true potential due to them rarely working outside of Scotland, 
A seventh P2 is currently under construction in Doncaster, with the hopes that it will be pulling rail tours up and down the UK in a few years' time, so we'll finally get to see what they could really do. Until then, the P2s still hold a place in the hearts of steam enthusiasts for each being a one-of-a-kind machine, and, unlike many experimental engines, flawlessly performing the work they were given. Subscribe for more.